Hello friends, this video on locomotion and movement part 3 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now we will talk about the different types of movements which are seen inside the body of a human being. Now there are basically three types of movement which are, see, which are seen in the cells of the human body. Amoeboid movement, ciliary movement and muscular movement. So now in this lesson we are going to talk about all these types of movement. So first we will start with amoeboid movement. Now the name itself suggests amoeboid that means the movement which is like amoeba. So the way amoeba moves, how amoeba moves, they move with the help of the false feet or the pseudopodia. So there are some cells inside the human body which moves like amoeba. So that movement is called amoeboid movement. Ciliary movement, the movement which occurs with the help of cilia. So some cells of the human body are ciliated, that is they have cilia and that is why they have ciliary movement. Muscular movement is related to the muscles. So muscles play an important role in muscular movement. So we will let us talk about all these three types of movement. So as I said, ciliary movement is something related to cilia. As you can see in the picture, muscular movement, when you move your muscles, say whether when you are doing exercise or you are running, so they all, are, they all involve muscular movement. If you talk about the amoeboid movement, it is like the amoeba. So now let us talk about the amoeboid movement. So this here in case of amoeba, the movement occurs by pseudopodia. Pseudo means false, podia means the feet. So pseudopodia means false feet. Now how movement occurs in amoeba with the help of false feet? Okay, what is false feet in amoeba? Let us quickly have a look. So let us see how the movement occurs using false feet. Now let us suppose this is an amoeba. So amoeba generally have an abstract shape, no specific shape as such. Now what do they do? They try to move by protoplasmic extensions. So this is all protoplasm inside, right? Now let us suppose that this amoeba wants to move in this direction. So how does it move? There will be an extension of the protoplasm in that direction. So if you see, it gradually tend to extend. Now as it extends, the entire protoplasm, now the outer part is called ectoplasm and the inner part is called endoplasm. Let us suppose this is endoplasm and this one is ectoplasm. Now the ectoplasm will move forward and the endoplasm will tend to flow in that side. And that is how this actually moves. So gradually it will move this side. Again, it will extend the protoplasm and it will move further this side. So that means it will keep on changing its shape and the protoplasm will tend to flow in that direction. So it does not have a feet as such. There is no true feet present, but the protoplasm extensions act as feet. And that is why it is known as false feet. So it not only helps in locomotion, but it also helps to engulf food. Let us suppose if there is a food particle here, if this is a food particle. Now the protoplasm extends in this fashion because it can change its shape. So the protoplasm will extend in this fashion and finally it will absorb this food inside. So it will surround the food completely and then it will take it inside. So that is how it also helps to engulf food. Now the question is which cells inside the human body shows amoeboid movement? Now the cells in human body which exhibit amoeboid movement are leukocytes and macrophages. What are leukocytes? They are nothing but the white blood cells and macrophages. Macrophages again they are also specialized uh, white blood cells and they form a very important part of the immune system. Macro means big. The term macro means big and phages means to eat. It, it has come from the word phagocytic. So macrophages are specialized type of WBCs that engulf and digest microbes, cancer cells, foreign substances inside the body and that is why they are an important part of the immune system. They also move by extensions of ectoplasm and then endoplasm flows inwards like very similar to that of amoeba. So here you can look at a WBC, the leukocytes rather. This is how they look like. In leukocytes also you have different types like the neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils. So they somewhat of 
the shape and then they also move by uh, the protoplasmic extension and this is a macrophage this is how it looks so these are some of the cells inside the human body which moves by amoeboid movement let us look at the next type of movement called ciliary movement as i said there are certain cells inside the human body which possess cilia so therefore they have ciliary movement so these are movement by numerous hair like structures called cilia as i showed you in case of paramecium the small hair like structures on the outer surface of the body so they move and therefore helps other substances also move that is how they help in movement so the regions in the human body where you can see ciliary movement are the organs which are lined by ciliated epithelium. Now you might ask which organs are lined by ciliated epithelium. One good example is the trachea of the respiratory tract, the windpipe. So what happens when you breathe in air through your nostrils? So let us look at the trachea of the respiratory tract. So here you can see this is the trachea or the windpipe. Now what happens when you breathe in air through the nostrils? So what happens? The air has a lot of dust particles or the foreign particles inside it. So they need to be removed. So how can you remove them? Now this trachea is lined by, internally lined by cilia. Now these cilia will act as broom, as I said, broom which cleans the dirt from your house. Similarly, these cilia will move and it will block the dirt particles and the foreign matter to enter inside and it will push it back towards the upper side. So that is how the lining of the ciliated epithelium helps and where you can find these type of ciliary movement. So they have ciliated columnar cells present just like the broom as I, as I said inside it this is how you have the ciliated columnar cells. So these are the column like cells with cilia. So here you have these cilia. Now when you breathe in air now along with the air there will be some foreign particles. Now these will move and it will actually try to block the foreign particles exactly what is done by the broom when you clean your house. The next place where you can find ciliated epithelium are the fallopian tubes in the female reproductive system. Now this is how the female reproductive system looks like. So this is your ovary. So this is the ovary. So this is again another ovary because they exist in pairs. And this tube-like structure which connects the ovary with the uterus. This entire thing is the uterus. So this tube-like structure is the fallopian tube. So what is the purpose of the fallopian tube? Now the ovary produces the eggs and the eggs are carried by the fallopian tubes to the uterus. Right? So this fallopian tube, they are also lined by ciliated epithelium and this cilia or the movement of the cilia helps the eggs which are produced in the ovary to move through the fallopian tube. Because due to the movement of the cilia, it propels the egg also to move along the fallopian tube. So that this is another part of the human body where you can see ciliated epithelium. Let us now look at the last type of movement that is the muscular movement. This is the movement that takes place by contraction of muscles. So, and this is very, very important because these are the movements which are like very common and very visible for us in our day to day life. Because if you talk about the amoeboid movement or the ciliary movement, it happens deep inside our body which we do not see. But when you talk about the muscular movement, it is something that we see every day. We experience each and every time we do it. We move your fingers, we move your hands, we you move your legs. So, they are all muscular movements. Now, a very interesting question is how the muscles contract to cause these kind of movements because if you compare the movement of our hands with the movement of uh, the ciliated epithelium, the difference is huge, right? The ciliated epithelium, it is just the cilia which are moving up and down and that is how it is controlling the movement of other substances. But if you look at the movements of our hands, there is a lot of flexibility involved. You can move your hand the way you like, whenever you want. So, it is very interesting to know how these kind of movements take place. Now, look at, let us look at the regions where we see muscular movement, the movement of limbs, whether we talk about our hands or the legs, 
when you are playing, you are cycling, you are running, you are walking, you are writing, you are eating. So each and every activity which you do involves a lot of muscular movement. The movement of your jaw, tongue, eyelids, so all small movements, all big movements, which is like evident, they are all caused by the muscles. So whether you open your mouth, whether you take your tongue out, or when you blink your eyelids, so all of them are controlled by the muscles which are present inside our body. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.